You know, I, I'm sure you're like I am. When I have trouble, one of the things I always pray is, Lord, can you get me out of this? You know, <laughs> can I please get out of this sure, mess? Sure. Well, Daniel went to Babylon when he was a 14 year old boy. He was captured and taken there as a hostage. And he lived in Babylon as a captive until he was in his mid 90s. When the people of Israel were finally allowed to go back to Jerusalem, he was so old and so weak, he couldn't make the journey and he died in Babylon. Wow. So here's this man of God who was taken to a pagan culture, not unlike the challenges we've been talking about. And God allowed him to live in the midst of that culture for 75 years. And he was promoted to the top position under four different kings during the time he lived in Babylon. Unbelievable. And James, what I said to our people, I remember one day God gave this to me. I wrote it down. We actually made a bookmark out of it. It goes <laughs> like this. He didn't stand down. That would have been cowardice. Mm -hmm. He didn't stand aside. That would have been um, compromise. He didn't even stand against. That would have been contention. He stood up. Mm -hmm. That was courage mm -hmm. and conviction. Wow. And wherever Daniel was confronted with the culture, you will not find one message in this book where he rails against Babylon. He just stands up for what he believes. Wow. He won't eat the king's meat and drink his wine. He won't bow down to his God and he won't quit praying. He nope. just stands up. He's just God's person in the midst of this environment. And that's what I sensed God was saying to me. David, you don't have to be a, you don't have to trade your pulpit in for a soapbox. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to do that. I'm not a, and I'm not going to get on a, a talk show and try to out yell the person who's the cross from me <laughs> because I think that's demeaning to your message. No, you wouldn't make it in Congress. Uh, well, no, I know that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't make it. I wouldn't make it on most talk shows either. Yeah. Or in most Baptist conventions, right. I'm sorry to say. But you know, I, I, I got to tell you something. I tried this out. Right after God gave this to me, was right after the marriage amendment came out. And immediately, I knew this would happen. The local TV station called and said, could, you, could we come out and talk to you? And so I, I was thinking, don't stand down. Don't stand aside. Don't stand against. Stand up. So he came out and he asked me what I thought about. The, and I said, well, you guys already know what I think. But let me tell you what I want to tell you. I said, next year, uh, next week, I'm going to be married to the same woman for 52 years. God's given me four great kids. I got 12 great grandchildren. Man, I love the family. When God created the family, he got it right. And I want to stand up for the family. And the guy just looked at me like he didn't, he didn't know what to do. There you did it.